Did you see Donald Trump's accounting firm said his tax statements from 2011 to 2020 should no longer be relied upon? Hi, I'm Johnny Mac with your Daily Comedy News. Jimmy Kimmel said, in other words, we're not going to prison with you, Mr. Trump. <laughs> Colbert. So for those nine years, no one should trust any of his financial statements or any of his statements. Corden, good for them standing up and doing the right thing 10 years too late. Jimmy Kimmel, the New York Attorney General and Manhattan DA have been trying to determine whether the insurers, lenders and others Trump dealt with were misled about the strength of his finances. Let me save you guys some trouble. They were. Colbert, if there's any karma in this world, they dropped him for a younger, hotter client. That's hilarious. Corden. What new information could have come to light right now? Were they like, wait a minute, Trump organization as in Donald? Does that have something to do with Donald Trump? Kimmel, I'll tell you, there's nothing more depressing than getting dumped by your accountant during tax season. It's like getting divorced on Christmas Eve. I like the idea of Donald Trump angrily now setting up a TurboTax account to get his taxes done. A lot of people believe this could be it for Donald Trump. This could be the one. I don't know how many of the ones have we had now. We're like 400 or something. Stephen Colbert for the win. Now he's going to have to have someone else do his taxes. I suggest H&R Cell Block. Love it. So remember yesterday, I told you my spidey sense was tingling a little bit with the Bob Saget story. I'm not trying to cause trouble here, but the spidey sense is tingling and the spidey sense is tingling a little more from CNN. The family of actor and comedian Bob Saget filed a lawsuit Tuesday to block the release of certain records related to the investigation into Saget's death, citing privacy concerns. They requested that some investigation records related to death be exempt from being revealed publicly because of the graphic nature and how they portray the late actor. I can understand that. The lawsuit says in the process of these investigations, defendants created records which include photographs, video recordings, audio recordings, etc. So, yeah, I could understand you don't want photos of Saget going out there. But this last part, and I hadn't picked up on this previously, I'm not sure if it had been previously reported, but in this CNN story, while there was no alcohol present in his body, his systems contained clonazepam slash clonopin, which is taken for seizures, panic disorders, and anxiety. The report shows. Additionally, the antidepressant Trazodone was found in Saget's system, the report said. We'll keep an eye on that story. I don't want to speculate, but uh, it seems to still be in the news. I'll leave that there. Chevy Chase told CBS Sunday Morning that he doesn't give a crap about headlines and former co-stars painting him as problematic on set. This from Variety. This is a weird move. Basically, to summarize, and I'll catch you up on it, Chevy Chase, people say he's a jerky face, and he's like, yeah, I am, I don't care. Variety writes, Chase's behavior has been described by co-stars as racist, misogynist, and horrific over the years. Chase was asked about stories of him being a jerk, and he said, I guess you'd have to ask them. I don't give a crap. I am who I am, and I like who I am. I don't care. And it's part of me that I don't care. And I've thought about that a lot, and I don't know what to tell you, man. I just don't care. Community co-star Donald Glover told The New Yorker in 2018 that Chase repeatedly made racist jokes on set. According to that article, Chase often tried to disrupt the scenes with Glover by making racial cracks between takes, one of which was the following, quote, people think you're funnier because you're black. Dan Harmon said at the time, Chevy was the first to realize how immensely gifted Donald was and the way he expressed his jealousy was to try and throw Donald off. I remember apologizing to Donald after a particularly rough night of Chevy's non-PC verbiage and Donald said, I don't even worry about it. Glover interpreted Chase's racist cracks as the comedian thrashing in the water. I just see Chevy as fighting time. A true artist has to be okay with his reign being over. I can't help him if he's thrashing in the water, but I know there's a human in there somewhere. He's almost too human. Chase responded to Glover by saying he was saddened to hear that he perceived him in that light. In 2018, Pete Davidson, who we never talk about, called Chase an effing douchebag. After Chase criticized the then-current SNL cast, Davidson added, F Chevy Chase, he's just a genuinely bad racist person and I don't like him, he's a putz. Will Ferrell called Chevy Chase the worst host after Chevy's February 1997 SNL appearance. Farrell said, I don't know if he was on something or what, if he took too many back pills that day or something, but he was just going around the room and systematically riffing. When he got to one of our female writers, he made some reference like, maybe you can do me a favor, sexual, later, and I've never seen Lorne Michaels more embarrassed and read. Wow. I suspect we're going to hear more about Chevy in the next few days. This next thing is cool from HBO, George Carlin's American Dream, a two-part documentary. It'll debut in May. 
The documentary tracks Carlin's rise to fame from his childhood in New York City and touches on his drug use, brushes with the law, and two marriages with the use of exclusive interviews and never-before-seen archival material. Some of the people in this thing, Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld, Patton Oswalt, Stephen Colbert, Bill Burr, Bette Midler, W. Kamau Bell, Sam J., Judy Gold, John Stewart, Kelly Carlin, Jerry Hamza, and Sally Wade. I know both Kelly Carlin and Jerry Hamza. Kelly is George's daughter. Maybe I'll hit them up and see if they can come on and talk about this thing. It's always fun to talk about Carlin. So looking forward to that. And an update on Bendergate. John DiMaggio released a statement. Catch everybody up. John DiMaggio is the voice of Bender. Futurama is coming back, but DiMaggio is not coming back as the voice. DiMaggio's statement says, Hi, I've been thinking about everything that's been going on these past months. And just to be clear... I don't think only I deserve to be paid more. I think the entire cast does. Negotiations are a natural part of working in show business. Everybody has a different strategy and different boundaries. Their price. Some accept offers. Some hold their ground. Bender is part of my soul. And nothing about this is meant to be disrespectful to the fans or my Futurama family. It's all about self-respect. And honestly, being tired of an industry that's become far too corporate and takes advantage of artist time and talent. Look, I wish I could give you every detail so you would understand, but it's not my place. Thanks again for the love, everyone. Still hoping for the best. In the meantime, I'll be in New Orleans shooting Interview with a Vampire for AMC and very grateful to be. Thanks. I've actually started watching Futurama again. I randomly, I didn't want to start from season one because every time I start a Futurama, I'm going to rewatch. I start with season one. So I feel like I've seen season one eight billion times. And I'm like, let me jump to the Star Trek episode that had Shatner and Nimoy in it. And that's one of my favorite episodes. So I started there and then it rolled into season five. I figured if I really get back into Futurama, I can always go back. It's all on Hulu. So season five, episode one is about global warming. Sorry, I misspoke there. The Star Trek is the end of Season 3, Season 4, Episode 1, Crimes of the Hot, the head of former Vice President Al Gore holds an emergency summit in Kyoto to deal with the global warming caused by robot emissions. That episode came out in 2002. So I am a big alarmist for the climate emergency. Like, we need to start paying attention to this 30 years ago. If you want an illustration... November 10th, 2002, Futurama's already goofing on global warming, and it's 20 years later and we've done nothing. I digress, probably not while you're here. But anyway, the next episode after the global warming one, I can't even watch. Have you ever seen Jurassic Bark? Fry spots his petrified dog Seymour among the artifacts and exhibit at the Museum of Natural History. So when Fry disappears, spoilers here, the dog just waits outside the pizza shop and they show the dog waiting and waiting, and getting old, and not being able to stand, and waiting. I'm getting sad thinking about a freaking cartoon. And eventually the dog lays down and passes away, and Fry never returns. Oh my god, let's take a break. Yes, it's Daily Comedy News, where I make myself cry thinking about a cartoon. <laughs> Looking ahead to this weekend, on Saturday, Mitch Hedberg. Hedberg's birthday is next week, so Saturday is Mitch Hedberg Stories. Sunday, I did indeed do the Ivan Reitman episode. I haven't edited it yet. I just recorded it before this one. I think it came out pretty well. As I explained in the episode, I have a programming philosophy called Taking the Car Out for a Drive, so I don't really have a script on that one. It's just me going... Animal House, Toga, Otis Loves Us, Shout, 0.0. And hopefully it just uh, tickles your memories there. So Reitman on Sunday, Hedberg on Saturday. If you enjoy what I do here and you want to support the show, you go to buymeacoffee.com slash news. Throw some money in the tip jar. I'll take your five bucks. I'll go to the National Donuts chain. I'll buy one of these large iced coffees with caramel and milk. You can also get a National Donuts chain t-shirt for 20 bucks plus shipping. Five bucks of that goes to me. Great way to support the show. Buymeacoffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. All right, it's time for Endless Gossip on Gossip Corner. Amy Schumer, who's hosting the Oscars for some reason. Big congratulations to her agents on a job well done. I was thinking about that. I got to do some homework and see who everybody's agent here is. You know, I don't think the Oscars were sitting home going, oh, how about Amy Schumer? I bet the agent picked up the phone and initiated this discussion would be my guess. So great job, Amy Schumer's agent. Amy is hosting the Oscars for some reason. She took to Instagram on Monday and posted a nude photo. Yeah, Amy Schumer in the tub. What's going on? First, we've got Kathy Griffin skinny dipping and now Amy Schumer in a bathtub. This podcast is getting naughty. Don't worry. She covered herself under numerous bath toys. Some of those toys included giant letters, no secret message, and a large yellow duck. She does have a two-year-old named Jean. People on the internet theorize these were Jean's toys. But sticking on Gossip Corner Saturday night, Selena Gomez 
Cara Delavinia, is that how you say her name? And Amy Schumer were spotted letting their hair down at the Flatiron Members Only Club Chapel Bar. Fancy. That's right. Page six says the trio arrived to the hot spot located in a Park Avenue church around 10 p.m. Spies told us they sneaked out of a black car upon arrival. Inside, they held court in the confessional where they could party in privacy. The New York Post back in September wrote about Chapel Bar. There are three levels of membership. I know you're curious. There's the collector, which is a $200 a year option. And the family membership for $449 a year includes once monthly access to Chapel Bar. The latter includes more perks. Then there's the patron membership, which if you're hosting the Oscars, I hope you're a patron, which costs $2,000 per year and means you can visit Chapel Bar whenever you like. Can you imagine? If, I don't. I could make a billion dollars off this podcast. I would never do any of this. Untapped says the bar is located inside a 19th century chapel and schoolhouse. The schoolhouse designed in 1867. It was part of Calvary Church. A suit says the concept for Chapel Bar was to build a sanctuary for culture, a place to worship art, photography, fashion, and music in a chic setting, surrounded by creative and curious individuals. We're bringing together a kindred. Do you hear the old man coming out in me? There's also a VIP confessional room serving experiential cocktail service. All right, Johnny Mac, let's focus and get back to Gossip Corner and Amy Schumer. The source to page six says the whole club was trying to get in. It was super tight. The ladies didn't want anyone to see who was in the confessional. They kept a very low profile. And yet this made the New York Post. Uh Uh-huh. Very low profile. Yeah. Amy Schumer keeping a low profile at a club in a story making page six. Two days before it gets announced, she's hosting the Oscars. Also, coincidentally, the same week that her TV show is out on Hulu. Yeah. Keeping a low profile. I'm sure nobody leaked that one. Uh Uh-huh. Disney has unveiled the trailer for Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. This stars John Mulaney as Chip and Mac Packer Andy Samberg as Dale, telling a story which finds Chip and Dale living amongst cartoons and humans in L.A., including familiar faces like Roger Rabbit. That's interesting. The story takes place in real time and picks up decades after Chip and Dale found success with their Disney cartoon, with the two having taken different paths. This sounds like fun. Chip, so that's Mulaney, is living the life of suburban domesticity as an insurance salesman. I hope Chip doesn't leave his wife and run off with some, I'm oh, sorry, I'm digressing, uh, while Dale has had CGI surgery and works the convention circuit to relive his glory days. But when a former castmate disappears, Chip and Dale must repair their broken relationship and take on their Rescue Rangers personas once again to save their friend's life. That sounds like a good time. Mulaney and Sandberg, Chip and Dale, Rescue Rangers, May 20th. Jeez, I'm getting long here again because I went on the Amy Schumer. Rant. All right, this can wait. This can wait. Tonight in Vancouver, hot takes, comedy show plus spicy wings. Yeah, it's like hot ones, except you're at a comedy club and there's comedy. At hot takes, comedians will be telling jokes while having hot wings. The first is milder. The second will feature the notorious Da Bomb hot sauce. Sounds like a good time. And I do want to get to this. I'm going to ask you two questions. One. Have you ever seen Bob's Burgers? The answer, of course, is no. Two, have you ever met anyone who has seen Bob's Burgers? That answer is also no. So if you're a new listener, and there are a lot of new listeners, uh, like in the last couple of weeks, so welcome, everybody. Let me catch you up on the Bob's Burgers conspiracy. Now, I understand that you've seen drawings of Bob's Burgers. I understand that Fox promotes Bob's Burgers during football. My questions to you are, one, have you ever seen Bob's Burgers? You haven't. And have you ever met anyone who has actually seen Bob's Burgers? No. There's something going on here where Fox promotes that tonight they have, I think they're trying to trick the investors because they have to pretend they're a full-time TV network, but they know after Joe Buck football, you're going to switch over to Al Michaels football. So they don't actually have to program on Sunday night. They just have to make the investors think there's a show called Bob's Burgers. Now, here's the proof from The Hollywood Reporter. Fox developing a Bloom County animated TV series based on beloved comic, okay? Fox is looking to bring to life Steve Dallas, Bill the Cat, Opus the Penguin, remember all that? From Bloom County? Yeah, that ran from 1980 to 1989. Maybe you don't remember it. Maybe I'm just old. It was a really popular comic strip, you'll have to trust me. Anyway, they're making an animated series out of Bloom County, but here's the money line. If the project is greenlit, Bloom County would presumably join the likes of Family Guy and The Simpsons in Fox's Sunday animated lineup. Family Guy and The Simpsons, those clearly exist. No mention 
of Bob's Burgers. Isn't that weird? Did somebody slip up and blow the joke? I think so. If you would like to comment on any of this insanity, the Facebook group is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group. The subreddit is Daily Comedy News. And you can follow this show on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, wherever you get your shows. Buymeacoffee.com slash Daily Comedy News. See you tomorrow.